Hi everyone, it's Miss Cheryl. Welcome to week four of our summer discovery program, Tales, Myths, and Legends. I'm going to read about bizarre beasts and critters that creep about the countryside of Ohio's hills and shores. Ordinary people, credible people, have witnessed them and reported events of such critters. Have you heard of Bigfoot, the Mothman, or Bessie? Well, maybe you have heard of Nessie, but Bessie is our own Lake Erie monster. Is she a hoax or is she horror? For years, people have been reporting sightings in Lake Erie of an unknown creature named, nicknamed South Bay Bessie or just plain Bessie. She is described as being gray, snake-like, and 30 to 40 feet long. Though several sightings have been logged in recent years, the monster is known mostly from historical accounts. These fierce monsters are able to live both on land and in the water. Call it a snake or what you will, measuring 25 to 30 feet in length and at least a foot in diameter. Stories of the monster persisted either in spite of or because of hoaxes perpetrated in its name. Intermediate sightings were reported from the 1960s through the 1990s. By 1993, Monster Media was in full swing. A clever marketing ploy to draw tourists into the small town of Huron, they declared themselves the National Live Capture and Control Center for the Lake Erie Monsters. A $100,000 reward for the safe and unharmed capture of the beast was offered. The reward has never been claimed. A biologist for the Ohio Division of Wildlife thinks the animal is large specimen of a lake sturgeon, which can live up to 150 years and can grow to more than seven feet in length and weigh over 300 pounds. In the summer of 1998, a man off New York's Lake Erie shore caught a specimen measuring 7 feet 4 inches and weighing 250 pounds. They look very prehistoric. Where other fish have scales, the lake sturgeon has a bony plate which gives it a reptilian, leathery look. The sturgeon is a bottom feeder. Though it rises occasionally to the surface, its tail could conceivably be interpreted as being the neck of a great sea monster. Its fins can be viewed as the underleading body. The lake sturgeon is listed as the endangered species in Ohio. There is presently no plans for tagging Bessie. The next myth or legend is the Mothman of Gallipolis. Mothman has clear Ohio connections. The story is based on the true events that occurred in the 1960s in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Point Pleasant is located on the Ohio River right across from the Gallipolis, Ohio. The story began in November 1966 when sightings of what locals were calling Big Bird began getting media attention. An Ohio copy editor dubbed the thing Mothman. Ohio was a hotbed of Mothman activity. On November 17, 1966, a teenage boy saw a gray, man-shaped, 10-foot tall creature with red eyes while he was driving. Then, in December, five pilots at the Gallup, Gallup Police <laughs> Airport saw what they thought at first was an airplane flying. All five later agreed that it appeared to be a giant bird with a long neck. Also, four women were driving in Ohio when they spied a brownish silver man shaped flying creature with glowing red eyes. How would you like to see that coming at you? Mothmen may have developed a protective mimicry so they could disguise themselves as upright trees and logs lying on the ground. A woman in southern Ohio saw with utter disbelief a old, tall, topless tree trunk, approximately nine to 10 feet high, moved about four feet sideways. Again, it moved only this time there was a partial twisting. It slowly maneuvered back and into the woods with no noises, as graceful as a bird. She saw the semblance of two eyes and thought it was watching them. The sun went down and the sight was lost to view. 
The legend of the Mothman hiding in plain sight is still circulating in the communities on the Ohio side of the river. Some speculate that the Mothman's sightings are a warning sign that something tragic was going to happen. This dark prophecy was realized on December 15, 1967. The bridge between Point Pleasant, West Virginia and Gallipolis, Ohio collapsed, taking people to their death. Tragically, the breakdown of the dead revealed two from Virginia, three from North Carolina, 19 from West Virginia, and the greatest number, 22 victims, were from Ohio. If you're interested, there was a movie in 2001 um, with Richard Greer in it, and it was called The Mothman Prophecies. It was a very interesting spin on this legend. So, the last myth or legend is the granddaddy of all American monsters, Bigfoot. And of course, there are many reports of large, hairy, and stinky biped in Ohio starting in the late 1700s. The more modern history of Bigfoot in Ohio begins so far as written accounts go in 1869. The article was headlined as Gorilla in Ohio and told of a hairy creature haunting the woods near the town of Gallipolis. In recent years, Ohio has been one of the most active areas for Bigfoot sightings. The creature has been given a number of local names such as Orange Eyes and even Grass Man. One of the best examples of the Buckeye State Bigfoot dates from the 1970s from the town of Minerva, the Minerva Monster. Minerva, Ohio is five miles southwest of Youngstown. It um, roughly takes 1.3 hours by car. Just to give you a little perspective of how close these sightings are to us. The rumors of activity began surfacing in July and August of 1978. The Claytons saw a huge creature covered with dark matted hair they estimated it to be about 300 pounds and seven feet tall. It was sitting in the gravel pit, picking at the garbage. The creature returned again, peered through a kitchen window, the eyewitness reached for their guns, and the creature suddenly left. A strong stench still lingered in the area. The deputy and some other officers searched the entire area, but found only unusual but not very clear footprints. It then returned again, but when Clayton fired a shot into the air, the creature departed. Another investigator interviewed the Cape Claytons, and they hiked into the woods where they spent the night. They looked for physical evidence but came up with nothing, nor did they witness anything unusual. In the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s, Reports of other hairy smeller creatures popped up now and then, but none were as famous as the Minerva encounters, but they remained the most intriguing Bigfoot sightings in Ohio history, but in no means the last. Um, if you'd like to learn more about other urban legends um, or myths, check out the book Weird Ohio from the library. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Have a good day.